Danish royal jewels are among the most luxurious in Europe. Today, some of the most famous jewellery is worn by Queen Mary of Denmark. When Her Majesty attends special occasions, including royal weddings, state banquets, or annual celebrations, she often wears a luxurious tiara of diamonds and rubies. The tiara is simply elegant, but it has an unusual history. Dating back several centuries to France, during Napoleon Bonaparte's unforgettable imperial coronation. The Danish ruby diadem, a historic and significant piece of jewellery, is closely associated with the Danish royal family. Although hereditary titles change and successors come of age, there is one long and stable presence in the Danish monarchy. It is part of the Danish crown regalia, which consists of various symbols of the monarchy, including crowns, scepters, orbs, swords, and rings used during coronations and other ceremonial occasions. The ruby diadem is particularly noted for its exquisite craftsmanship, rich history, and the deep symbolic significance it holds within the context of the Danish monarchy and national identity. The diadem is crafted from gold and set with numerous precious stones, most notably a significant number of rubies which give the piece its distinctive appearance and name. The rubies are accompanied by diamonds, which together create a stunning visual contrast, emphasizing the rich red hue of the rubies. Known as the Danish Ruby Crown Tiara, this 200-year-old jewel is a marvelous display of craftsmanship. It is decorated with luxurious leaves, diamond pavé, and fixed clusters of unique rubies stylized as berries. As a Peru element, it has been assembled in various configurations since its creation in France in 1804. Now this Peru, in addition to a tiara with floral patterns, includes a pair of universal chandelier earrings, an elegant necklace that can be worn in different configurations, a brooch, bracelets, hair clips, and a ring set with diamonds and tiny rubies. Interesting facts from the history of jewellery. The origins of the ruby perua date back to the court of Napoleon Bonaparte. In preparation for his coronation as Emperor of France, Napoleon took great pains to make the event appear as festive as possible. To ensure that all his essential guests looked the part, Napoleon gave money to his 18 most famous marshals to buy their spouses elegant jewellery for the event. One of these marshals turned out to be Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte. He had an exciting relationship with Napoleon. In 1798, Bernadotte married Désirée Clary, the daughter of a Marseille silk merchant. Notably, Désirée was engaged to Napoleon until 1795, but he broke off the engagement after meeting Josephine. But that's not all the connections. Désirée's sister Julie married Napoleon's brother Joseph, Thanks to his wife, Jean-Baptiste found himself in the Emperor's inner circle. When Napoleon gave Bernadotte the money, he ordered jewellery for Desiree from a Parisian jeweller. His name is unknown. The set included a necklace, girandole earrings, a statement bodice brooch, and two branch hair accessories with diamond pavé leaves and ruby berries. When Desiree participated in the coronation ceremony on December 2, 1804, her luxurious ruby parure sparkled exquisitely as she walked behind Empress Josephine and carried the Empress's veil and handkerchief on a pillow. Desiree enjoyed living in Paris at the Emperor's court, but in 1810 her life changed. Bernadotte became the Swedish throne's crown prince, and his wife had to collect all her wealth, including rubies, and moved to Stockholm. Years later, when her husband became King of Sweden and Norway, Desiree was unhappy and fled to Paris, where she lived until 1823. During this time, her son Oscar married Josephine, the granddaughter of Empress Josephine, and Desiree was forced to return to Stockholm, where she lived until she died in 1860. The next recipient of the tiara and Parua was Desiree's daughter-in-law, Josephine. 
She amassed a vast collection of jewellery, including jewellery from Empress Josephine and the imperial family of Brazil. But in 1869, when her granddaughter, Princess Louise, married Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, Josephine presented her with a red and white ruby parure in the colours of the Danish flag to take with her. It is said that Queen Josephine was adamant that the set should remain with Queen Louise, marking their return to Denmark. Queen Louise then gave the tiara to Alexandrine, Crown Prince Christian's fiancée, as a wedding gift. But Alexandrine waited until Louise's death to inherit full rights to the parure. She combined the two branches and wore them as a kind of bandeau. Louisa died in 1926 and bequeathed the rest of the set to her eldest son, King Christian. It is a pity that it has not yet been possible to find a single Alexandrine portrait with a complete set of ruby decorations. Alexandrine was not a fan of precious jewellery, so the Peruri did not remain in her collection for long. She and Christian decided to give the entire ruby sea to their daughter-in-law, Princess Ingrid of Sweden, in 1935. Interestingly, Princess Ingrid was the great-great-great-granddaughter of the original owner of the Perur. This jewellery set is often called Ingrid's Rubies because Queen Ingrid revolutionized hair jewellery from a simple headband to a wreath tiara, changing the design throughout her life. Another notable change was that she added several flower brooches to the tiara to complement it. When Ingrid died in 2000, she bequeathed most of the jewellery to her three daughters and presented the ruby parua to her grandson, Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark. These rubies were intended for his future wife, whom Frederick met several months before receiving the ruby set, as it later turned out. In 2004, Mary Donaldson, from Australia, became the wife of Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark. After announcing her engagement, rubies became the first significant set of royal jewellery she wore. In 2010, after six years of owning the Perua, then Crown Princess Mary, following Ingrid's example, decided to change it. A total of 13 leaves and 55 rubies were removed from the tiara and used in new jewellery. Hair clips, designed in collaboration with Queen Mary's of Denmark hairdresser, Søren Hedegaard and the future queen herself, and a ring. The result was three stunning 18K white gold studs with diamonds and ruby berries. The ring, made from 18 karat gold, diamonds, and a giant ruby, took a week to create. The tiara is traditionally worn by the Danish royal family on major state occasions, weddings, and other significant events. It has been notably worn by Queen Margrethe II and Crown Princess Mary, showcasing the continuity and enduring presence of the Danish monarchy. Do you like the how now, like a modified tiara, or do you prefer a previous look? Please write in the comments below. Thanks for watching.